you're 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 trying to say that this robot that you went online for, whatever have you. No, go ahead. I don't understand it. It's a robot. It's a store robot, right? Right. Yeah. Who's who's supposed to be there to go over spills to identify spills? You know, in the store. Well, how many people? Security robot. Well, how many people spill spills? How, what kind of store is this? How many how many spills did you have it's in the store? It's a shop. It's a what? Stop and shop. You never heard of that supermarket chain, Stop and Shop? Well, I'm sure it's like all the other ones, but yeah, but go ahead. So I don't understand. Look, I, I don't understand. Now, he's, so, really, he's really patrolling the store, looking for like if if like say somebody drops some eggs, or you know they had a bottle of milk and it just hit the ground and it bursts. You know what I'm saying? Or detergent spilled or something. Something like that. No, I got, I, I understand that. I, I understand that completely, right? No worries. But my, my question is, why do they have it out there all the time? Wh why don't they just call it when it's needed? I mean, you can't be, it can't be spilling every five minutes there's another spill something. Yo, this thing be like a giant rumble, just rotating all around the aisles through the store. So, it's like, you know, every time I go to the store, I'm not saying like every time I go to the store, I'm confronted by it, but it's almost like you go to the store, you're in aisle 12, mm. you go to, then you move to 13, then you say, oh man, I forgot something back in um 15. So you go back to 15, and then he might be there in 15, <laughs> right? So you kind of walk into his zone right there, right? Or, you know, usually, um you know, the, the end caps is where the stuff is on sale, in the back of the store is usually where the meat is and stuff like that. So you get some meat and stuff like that. So he might be rolling through the back where the meat is and stuff like that. And the meat, the bread, the eggs, you know, the milk, like that, right? I, I know. I'm, I'm, yeah, so, now, so you're just doing your shopping and stuff. But it's almost like how when you would go to the store and you see people that you normally see in the store around the same time every time you go because they also frequent the same store as well. So he's now a, a recurring character for me where he shows up every time I'm there at some point. But like I was saying before, I'm online going to the self checkout. So now because of social distancing, they have markers right on the floor, on the floor. So I'm waiting at a marker because the, the, um, the checkout area has about maybe four stations Maybe one, two, three, four, five, five stations. So it's like a U, like an inverted U, right? So mm -hmm. I'm like the sixth person. So I have to stand in a spot, you know, away from that area, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And wait my turn. Well, guess what? Homeboy shows up. He's coming down the aisle, right? So that's the space between where I step into that zone, mm -hmm. the, the self-checkout zone. And the area where I'm standing, which is still kind of near um, one of the other, like, um, human, you know, cashiers. Okay. Like the human cashier stand. It's like the last stand that they're in. Right? Yeah. Okay. So he comes by. He rolls past me. Stops. <laughs> then <laughs> makes an inverted L shape around me. So I'm thinking, like, okay, maybe his sister's, like, since there's a human here, so let me go around. But while he's going around, he's like rotating, looking. So like before when he was coming, I didn't see that smiley face thing. All of a sudden, when he's over to the to the left of me, passing me, the smiley face is looking right at me like, yeah, I see you. And I'm like, so I'm turning around like I'm rotating with him. He's rotating. I'm rotating. So I'm like, yeah, get a full body scan. But, you know what I'm saying? Well, black, black man. Black, yeah. black, black, I, I don't mean to interrupt your your your, uh, your narrative, as they say. You know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I think I think this is a little bit to be a little tad bit. You know, uh, machinophobic. I, I don't know what you would call. No, it's not. It. The, it's not because well, I'm very into tech. No, but you have to understand. The, I've been going to the store for a good pretty much since I moved. So, like, let's say I, I've been living here about 22 years or so. Let's say at least 15 to 17 years been going to that store using the card and stuff like that that they have, the store card. 
getting the discounts, well, getting um mm-hmm. like um gas perks with it and stuff like that. When did it but first? Not, excuse since me, since I've been going there, it's I've been of, followed by human beings. Oh, okay, yeah. I've even had human beings where some of the employees sort of befriend me because they think like, oh, maybe we can catch them this way or blah blah blah. <laughs> and they usually always send. <laughs> I'm telling you, they usually always send somebody bigger than me. <laughs> it's like somebody's like, oh no, dude, we got to get somebody that can handle this guy. So they get somebody. So they got this big Hispanic guy. Me and him became really good friends. He actually gave me one of the um, you know, one of those uh um, what they call it um, stock room type of um um belts. You know the um, you know the belt with the shoulder straps and stuff like that. Did you hold your gun in? No, no, no. The belts with the shoulder straps. So when you're lifting up packages and stuff, the back support and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, sure. okay. So he gave me one of those because he's a big guy and I'm a big guy. He goes, oh, I got an extra one of these. I'll give it to you, you know, because we talk, you know, he knows I work for, I, I work for the MTA and all that and stuff. So we actually, you know, became pretty good friends. Yeah, you but on, a, on, a work, know, on the worker cool. level, on the, on the lumpen proletariat level. Yeah. Okay. But I'm saying, but they sent him there on a mission and it failed because me and him became good friends. Mm-hmm. And then there was another brother that worked in the deli. Me and him became good friends. And I used to give him like applications to get me transit and stuff like that. But eventually they moved mm-hmm. him to another store. Mm-hmm. You know, so it was like I was making friends there. Mm-hmm. And then they came up with a new when they started on um, the new technology. That's when they first started with the self checkout. So then, you know. Me and the missus used to always go to the self-checkout for that, right? Mm-hmm. And not the one that I, w- I was just talking to you about. The other one that looks like the regular standard cashier area there. Yeah. But they took away the ca- they started taking away the cashiers, right? So, you know, this is like maybe the, um, the early to mid-2000s they started doing that. You know, they mm-hmm. started with like, you know, two registers. Then they went to four, you know, plus mm-hmm. one for just 12 items or less and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then they expanded it more to about eight of them now, right? Okay. Okay, so we were doing that. So we was, you know, rolling with that because, you know, Rosie used to work at a supermarket before, so, you know, years ago. So she knows how to pack. So it's like, I just stack, she packs, stack, pack, pay for it, we're in and out, boom. Yeah. And even if it's just me by myself, you know, I know how to do it by myself. And then even when Andrew used to be with us, we both would, you know, stack, pack, scan and stuff like that. You know, um, vegetables, which usually don't have like a um, scan and stuff like that. The real, you know, a, a, real, number, a real modern family. A, few, a, a, a real modern family. I got you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but a modern family that had a system. Mm-hmm. You understand? We were systematized in how to get in and get out and do what we got to do. And I'm telling you, we were followed in the store regardless. Then by 2012, they came up with a like a little hand scanner thing, right? Mm-hmm. So this little hand scanner thing you can carry with you. It looks like a little, almost like um, like a almost like a communicator. Or if you took like um, a smartphone and put a handle at the bottom of it. Yeah, you're you're talking you're talking that Star Trek business. Yeah, yeah, just like that, just like that, mm-hmm. like almost like a tricorder. So you would scan all your items and you can bag them yourself. Right. So. This is the early days of bringing your own recycle bags and stuff like that. Yeah. But they still had to store plastic bags for you. Now they don't have that now. They they stopped that in um like they start they started stopping it in 2019, but now it's official in 2020. You better bring your own bags. There's no plastic bags for you. Okay. If you don't um have bags, you gotta buy, you know, recyclable bags from the store. Right. Mm-hmm. So now we started using the scanner thing. So we were scanning and bagging stuff. And do you know, I'm telling you, four times out of five, oh, we have to check this stuff. So we scanned everything, we paid for everything, and then they want to check through our bags to make sure that the scanning and everything is correct. So there's a lesson in that. Your story was basically you never scan. You have to always have the story. The store has got to do all the work for you. You can't do the work yourself. Simple as that. You're not. You're not. You, you can't slave for the store. You have to nah. be catered to. Sorry. We're, we're a family on the move. You understand? <laughs> you have to remember <laughs> when my move. son was preparing for college and then in college and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. We didn't have time for no nonsense. 
of, you know, some old, this, you know, first older white person, then eventually older Indian person because the neighborhood started to, you know, gentrify towards them. So then they started hiring them as employees because they lived in the neighboring areas and stuff like that for them to figure out how to, you know, um, scan and price your stuff and not be racist about it, too. Because they also will throw some racism in where it's like, oh, wait a minute, isn't this this price? You know, then they catch an attitude because you caught them out there. Because they overcharge you for something that was on sale. So you're saying the system impinges so, upon saying, your personal... When I, say, when I say... Let me just finish. When I say racism, first it starts with they're angry and surprised because you're implying that they're incompetent and they don't do their job. So then that insecurity comes yeah. in. But then the racism comes in on top of that because it's like, oh, who you? You know, you untouchable telling me that I'm wrong or something? And then when you call them out on that, because I got so adapted with it, I would take pictures of the thing that was on sale. So they go, oh, we're going to do a price. I like, no, I can show you the picture right now. Boom, there it is. <laughs> In other words, you knew, you knew what they were going to challenge you on. Yeah. So it was all set up ahead of time. They, they, right. they, they so must have had... Saying, as the black man, the black man who's been through as an ADOS black man who knows history and knows what goes on, I use the tech to my advantage to fight whatever the system is throwing at me because I already know that, okay, I already know you're going to follow me. I already know you're going to check. I'm gonna, I already, already know that you, the manager, could probably look at my history because I, remember I mentioned about the, the card and stuff like that? Yeah. And you can see how much I'm spending. You can see how much I'm getting in um, discounts of gas points and stuff. So you know that I'm a good customer. But... Because of the code of white supremacy, they still have to come at you. You understand what I'm yeah, saying? I got you. I hear you. So I now, you. the new version is this robot. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Well, I understand, man. You know, uh, uh, you know, you know what I like with all movements. But all, I, I enjoy it, though. Well, I'm not like you know annoyed well, in any way. It's just like. Nah, I'm, 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 try, I'm trying to get what at something. You, got? you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get at something else. It's like, I might become friends with this robot, reprogram him, and let him follow y'all. Okay, dude. Like I said, it's your journey, and that's fine. Unfortunately <laughs> for me, I can't. I can't partake in this little fantasy or this little battle of yours. I should say, it's I don't. I, I don't, don't, don't want to be recruited. To, I don't want to be recruited to your cause because no, 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 I'm not even actually recruited to it. I'm just, you know. I'm just sharing, that's all. You understand? Like, okay. let's, let's say we was in the barbershop and I told the story. Yeah. yeah. You know, you'd be like, man, I don't believe that, whatever. You can say that if you want to. I got you. But, you know what I'm saying? But we in the same space, so I'm talking about it. Okay, I got you. All right. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this alone because like you talked about economy. There is an economy of time. You know, these people want to take up our, our time. That's the whole thing. That's the whole thing that, 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 that social network, that social dilemma, whatever that, that, that documentary was. They're talking about, you know, uh, Facebook and, uh, and and Twitter, whatever, how they take up your, uh, you know, because they're, they're vying for your time, your attention. And, yeah, exactly. And then, and I didn't realize it. But well, and then they always they always include the same little group. So the group we're concerned with is young girls from you know twelve to whatever seventeen, whatever it is, because they have this image thing. They all commit suicide and stuff like that. Uh, to me, you know, when people, to me, here's the thing. That uh, okay, here's what. Let me tell you how my brain thinks. I said, yeah, that's that's tragic or whatever it is, and you know you're gonna put them out there because you know everybody has concerns for little girls, and so they're gonna you know you're gonna get more people to your cause. I got that. That's marketing is good, but my thing is that when you see the amount of tattooing, and you realize tattooing is like an addiction. In other words, a lot of these times people when they have these low self esteem things, what they do is they cut themselves to hurt themselves to feel something to feel something. And when you're tattooing, you actually feel something. Yes. So uh, I suggest that you, the reason why you have this amount of... Tattooing and piercing. That, and piercing, the same thing. So 
so I look at this stuff as this is a uh, this is not a, some sort of fad that's going to go away. Whatever this is, this is an indication of what's so, what's happening in society. The, you're making a society that people want to feel something other than this dead end thing that you're giving to them, and so they they rather cut themselves. They would rather have some pain or some you know some awareness. Or, well, I won't say some pain, some sensation. Uh, that keep on partic- uh, part, you know participating in your little. Uh, you know, Ponzi scheme charade of, of just fleecing the people because you know you're trying to kill the world and you're trying to get as much out of the world, have as much pleasure uh, before it before it, it actually collapses. You know, it's, it's like I, I read a long time ago these people that lived around volcanoes. It's like when the vo- volcano became more active, they would start boinking more because they would think that, you know, they would, the world is coming to an end. So they, 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 their, their boinking would increase, would increase, let's put it that way. Well, I think the, the the so-called rich people of the world, the the, the 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 really rich people, everybody just you keep saying the same people, but there's other people that's much more richer than them. But they're just taking everything they possibly can because they know it's the end. So it's their form of boinking. Let let, let us boink the planet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because we know they, they, we know we're killing it. Yeah. And then some of them they they're trying to say, well, let's get off the planet. You know, well, you know, good luck with that. Like these SpaceX. Yeah. <laughs> You know, just like good well luck with that. But my thing is like, and then 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 then, then it falls upon us to 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 prevent them from doing that. Now that's the point. Why does it fall upon us to prevent them from killing the planet when they're so actively killing the planet? Why can't it fall on them to to stop killing the to to not kill the planet? <laughs> because I think they just want to kill the planet. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? They, that's their thing, man. It's like I'm into it. You know what I'm saying? That's their tattoo. That's their piercing. <laughs> oh gosh, I don't know. Oh, well, anyway, um, so that's that's. that's... Did you see that thing that I sent you though? Which one? Giuliani from that DLU thing. What? What he said again? Yeah, it was it was a DL Hughley post, but I don't think. He, he probably reposted it from somebody else, and I um, sent it to you, I think. Well, tell me what Jay it was. Giuliani was blowing his nose. No, I didn't get that. I, I think I saw that, but I, I just saw the Giuliani sweating the, the hair dye. Right. Now, now, this one, he blow, He was standing near the podium, and um, this woman was standing there, I guess one of the lawyers or representatives of Trump, mm-hmm. and Giuliani blew his nose and flipped the tissue outside in so that the book apart was on the outside. Right? Yeah. Then he's trying to fold it up so book is getting on his hands and then he started sweating then he wiped his, his brow with the same tissue. <laughs> with, the, with the book apart. He right. book, he, he so like, his, it's he, narrated by a brother who's watching it on TV. He's, and he's he, like, yeah, look at this thing. Look at him, you know. He, 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 he takes the book and he does this and then this and that and the other. Then he wipes his brow and stuff and then He's gonna touch the podium after that. He boogered his brow. He boogered yeah. his, his brow, and, and and that was just a sign. You know what it's like in a, in a world of spades. You know, what I mean, you you put that card on your forehead. You know, yeah. to show yeah. that you got it. Yeah. So so he boogered his forehead to show everybody that he that he's a booger. It's as simple right. as that. Look, he's a booger bear. Here's the thing. There's the other thing about that. My revelation this week about education. I'm through with all this stuff. But just like Jersey Kaczynski's um, um, uh, novel being there where, you know, you had this guy that was raised in, in, uh, uh, in seclusion by this rich, rich, rich old guy. All he did was, was being a gardener. And then when a rich guy died, there was no records of this guy. And there was through a series of, of incidences, this guy ends up running for president and winning the presidency. And all he knows yeah. is gardening. He can't read. He can't write. He just knows gardening. But yeah. it's like anything that you do, you can use it. To relate to everything else, you don't need to go to no university to relate to to know that one and one is two. It's just yeah. it's, it's not you know. So if you want to learn quantum physics, it's out there. It's on the internet, and you can learn it through your the, the through your understanding of things. Yeah, you know. I learned that when I when I first started in TA. I realized after my first five years, right, everything that I was going to see for the next four cycles of five, because it's like, I couldn't get out until like you have 25 years, right? And for me, because of of the age of 55, I had to do a little over that. So I knew in the next, after the first five years, 
for the next 22 at least, I was going to see the same thing over four different times or four and a half different times. Uh And that's what happened. I would see like, oh, okay, your your version two of what I dealt with in year three. Oh, your version three of what I dealt with in year 15. You know what I'm saying? That's it. (laughs) That's it. That's just the whole point. There's nothing new under the sun. That's what people have to get through their heads. There's absolutely nothing new under the sun. There there are no new jokes or anything like that. There's no new anythings. And there's the other thing, you know, that I'm really, that I'm realizing I'm I'm dealing with right now is like, you know, I've really been tracking Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. a little bit more and more and more every day. Just know that that's the only way out. There is no, we don't, we can't celebrate anything until racism is done. We can't do anything until racism is done. Yeah. We can't, we can't even crack a smile. We can't enjoy yeah. ourselves. And it's a shame, but that's the way, you know, that's just the way yeah. it is. So anyway, let me let you know. That's why people want you to smile, though. <laughs> it's like, you know, <laughs> come deny, on, smile. You know? de- deny everything. I got you. Yeah, exactly. You know, come on. Deny plausible deniability. Yeah. <laughs> you look better when you smile. Anthony, uh-huh. <laughs> that's a shame, you know. And so I, I read this. I read this thing about smiling a long time ago. That white people love to smile, and show their teeth. But when you show when a dogs when a when you when, when you were dealing with a dog, you're not supposed to show your teeth because that's the sign of aggression with a dog. Yeah, in the yeah. dog in the dog world, you know. So that's the whole thing. So when you deal with white people, don't you 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 show your teeth, and that's a, that's supposed to be a friendly gesture. They see your teeth. Yeah. They're like, oh, oh, they're, they're harmless. Uh, it's completely the opposite. And then the more I think about where white people and black people are so very different, you know, it's un, it's almost unbelievable, you know? It's like white people are dependent. They're hell-bent on destroying everything. It doesn't matter what it is. They need to tear it down. Yeah. We don't even know if it's tear it down to build it up better or just to tear it for the sake of tearing it down. Or, or, or the fact that it's easier to tear something down than it take the years and years and years it takes to build it up. I have no idea what the problem is, but it's a big problem. Because <laughs> the rest of the world is about humanity and humanity building and trying to build stuff that'll last and, and, and is durable and is functional. But everybody, but, but there's a group of people that just want to, you know, burn stuff down. Yeah. I don't know what the deal is, you know? You know me, me, well, that's what, you know... <laughs> I don't know if you saw that um, last week when uh, the Proud Boys had their Million Proud March and stuff like that. Who oh, did they? Yeah, what happened yeah. with them? What did yeah. they do? They went through this whole thing of, you know, marching through D.C., but they made sure they stopped in certain areas and they kept saying, fuck Antifa. Fuck Antifa. Fuck Antifa. Because they wanted Antifa to show up. So then it could be like the, you know, a WWE Battle Royale. But Antifa is not real. Like these Proud Boys are minuscule. Antifa is not real either. The numbers that Antifa has has to be... Look, these... these Okay. I have, I, don't, I have no evidence, so let me just shut up. I know this, though. Before I left for Africa in 2003, you know, yeah. uh, I was living in... Uh, Sil- I was living in uh, Washington, D.C. And one afternoon, right before I left Washington, D.C. in October... Um, was it September? Anyway, September, October, wherever. I left Washington, D.C. Uh, one of the afternoons, there was a running gun battle between like some sort of Peruvian gang and some other South 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 American gang. You know, they have some sort of beef with each other. And then it was like the middle of the afternoon. They had this whole thing where it was middle of the afternoon, two o'clock in the afternoon. They shot, they shot the this, this city bus and shot the bus driver in the, in the arm and stuff like that. And this guy, you can follow the trail. When I got home, because I was, I was at PFW at the time, uh, I saw that you know this guy had one of his little bikes, and the guy got on a bike that got shot in the leg, and he pedal you follow the blood trail all the way up, and he this guy bled out. That's how unprofessional these these gang these people were. But there was two gangs fighting each other. But then at the at the news at night, the police commissioner got on. I don't want to get to him, but he was a he was an idiot too. But he got on there saying it's a shame that these, in the middle of two o'clock in the afternoon, law-abiding citizens got to experience this gang warfare. And then the next news item on this, this is new press, because I was watching, that was the local news. 
No, it was, it was right before the local news, I guess. Anyway, international news showed an Israeli bomber coming to this uh, this uh, uh, apartment complex and shooting into the apartment complex. They're hovering there and shooting into the apartment complex, killing people. And I might wow. go think your thing was like, what's the difference between this this Peruvian gang, you know, the, these two Peruvian gangs fighting in the middle of the street in Washington, D.C., and, and, and Israel bombers or Israel, uh, whatever, the, the helicopter, whatever it was, you know, do this thing. The difference is the Israelis had the money and the bombs to get to get the helicopters. If the if the uh, Peruvian gang or whatever this other gang was had the helicopter money and the bombs, they would be doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. They, they're just fighting with different weapons, you know. They ain't got yeah. the... You know, so what's the so what's the difference? And it was so weird. It was a revelation to me because it was this, 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 either either the the, the 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 Israeli thing was first, or the other thing was second. I guess the other thing was because it was local news, yeah. And then they went into this this international story about this this bombing at the, the Palestinian uh, what do you call it a apartment building that's outside with the Israeli gunship, right? They just shooting up the building. You know what I mean? And you go like, oh come on now. Please. Anyway, man, you got anything else? Because I'm going to go. I'm going to shut this down. Nah, man, I'm good. I'm good. I've been, I've been meaning to ask you, do you watch Fargo or you don't watch it? No, I don't actually watch anything. I can't explain this stuff to you, but, you know, maybe someday I'll see the whole series or the whole whatever, the whole the whole season. Uh, I'm going. I'm about to go to uh, St. Louis. You're aware of it, though. Yeah, I'm aware of it. Right? Yeah, they they say uh, uh, what's name is doing a fine job. It's really good. Um, yeah, yeah. Because you know this one is based in 1950. This this, yeah. this particular season. Yeah, yeah. My my time, my time. Yeah, I got you. But like I said, I haven't really seen. Relate, a, I think you would really relate to it too. Yeah, I, I, and, um, you know, you got him there. Glenn Thurman was in it too, and stuff like that. Yeah, I'll do it. I'm just trying to say I'll wait for the whole season. I'm gonna sit down. And what they call it, binge watch. I like to binge watch those kind of things. I don't yeah. like to catch and I have to now, wait. I would love to binge watch it, but I mean, it's been so good, man. It's my, it's definitely like my my definite guilty pleasure on a Sunday night. Mm. I watched the, the same episode back to back. Oh. Well, like I said, when I go to St. Louis, I have I do the more of the TV thing there if I do do it at all. So, yeah. in fact, I might have the one set up downstairs so that I can watch it with my own. I watch whatever is on there. I think I think I will. So I, I'll yeah. do I'll do all my binge watching and stuff like that in St. Louis. I promise you. Oh, okay. You know. Okay, man. I'll check you later. All right. You take it easy. All right. Later. All right.